Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to episode four of Knights of Horror Radio, another broadcast live in Knights of Horror Studios. We're doing this one solo today. Uh, I want to thank the Lost Boys for coming on the first three episodes and doing some special stuff with us. We had Vertigo on all three episodes. We had uh, Lone Star there and we had uh, Matt there as well. So that was a fun time. Uh, we're gonna have them on in the future, so they may be may come in and out of the the uh, the show. But uh, I I'm just very thankful that they uh, dedicated some time and all that fun stuff for the show. Man, do we have a stack show today? There's a lot to talk about, and we're gonna start first and foremost with the latest in the haunt scene, which is of course Halloween Horror Nights. Now Halloween Horror Nights is looking to be a stacked year this year from speculation. Uh, Orlando has announced a lot of originals already, so that was really cool to see that um, and all that stuff. So I'm excited to see what Orlando is going to be pulling out this year because like there is a lot to look at, a lot to uh, to tend to and everything. First and foremost, I want to start off by saying that this photo credit goes to Five Fires, uh, which was then posted by uh, the Hauntline, which that's the post we're going to be looking at right now. And that is, of course, in the uh, Curious George lot, which we usually have our two mazes out there now uh, for the last couple of years. We have gotten a first look at a potential property that might be coming to both uh, HHN Hollywood and HHN Orlando potentially it could be a shared IP could just be coming to Hollywood but with that being said we're looking at Insidious potentially coming to HHN 2024 um, honest reactions for this uh, if this is true Insidious great franchise love the franchise a lot of fun um, I think it really brought back the meaning of horror again and whatnot but i think that um i don't know i i think i'm a little too insidious out at halloween horror nights i've seen insidious uh at halloween horror nights now three times um first two were great third one was all right maybe four times it's been now but uh yeah the only thing that i'm hoping happens with this insidious house maybe is if this is insidious to be exact i mean obviously with that facade that we're seeing and with the picture that we're seeing from insidious it looks very spot on to insidious however it could be a wide variety of things um but this the, the number one speculation right now is insidious of course uh now i would love to uh, you know if they're going to do insidious again i would love to see them do uh insidious Red Door. I think Red Door was a fantastic uh, installment of the franchise, and kind of went back and showed the love to the demons that we've seen in the in the in the previous films. Finished that kind of uh, story arc with that family, and we moved on from Insidious. Now I think they're going to be working on another Insidious pretty soon. That's going to carry on some other storylines and whatnot. But with the family, that storyline is settled. It is done. We've gotten three movies with that family now. Uh, so let's see where the next. Uh, installment of the franchise goes however that being said this could go one of two ways now you can base this entire maze off of the first uh the newest insidious should i say the red door i think that's your best bet to go however i have a feeling that they're going to go the second route which is the red door mixed with other scenes from insidious the, the entire franchise as a whole which honestly is also not a bad route to go i just don't want to see all the previous Insidious movies throughout the entire maze, and then we get a very tiny section of the Red Door. I think there's enough time and content and material to just do an entire Red Door maze. Um, but I know that there are probably things that they want to do with the franchise as a whole. That being said, if they were to do something with the franchise as a whole, could they possibly maybe... Uh, I don't know. do something where we get less black walls and maybe more scenes. Uh, a lot of transitions can easily be turned into, per se, um, I don't know, 
going through the hallway and seeing all the red doors, seeing all the doors and whatnot. We've seen that world in the in the um, we've seen that other world and whatnot, and it's there's a lot of detail that can go into putting into that. So I would love to see with the with the you know with everything with Insidious and everything. I would love to see what they can pull off with this maze. There's a lot of potential if it is Insidious. Nothing has been confirmed yet. Uh, like I said, Orlando has been killing it a lot lately with announcing all their original mazes thus far. And I think what's left is just IPs. A lot of the times, those IPs are shared with Hollywood. Not all the time, but a lot of the times. Majority of the lineup is shared with Orlando and Hollywood. So we're going to wait and see what that's going to be. They're going to roll out what we got. And then I know we usually get a couple IPs that are just exclusive to Hollywood. An original or two. And then, you know, it's it's getting closer and closer, hopefully. I would say with the update of this construction photo, I can imagine that PR and John Murdy may, may be kind of getting ready to pull the trigger and maybe announce something. Um, it's happened in the past where a dead giveaway is obviously what it is, and they come out the next day and announce something. So if there's something that comes out in the next day, we will get back on here and talk about it or make a video on our YouTube channel, so stay tuned. Uh, we're going to be uh, following this story very, clear, very, very closely. So, uh, yeah, we're excited, man. HHN's a fun time. I love the haunt scene. It's a great time to be a part of. Good morning. Thank you for the 18 months, Mooch. Mooch, appreciate it. Uh, good morning to you. Man, I can't talk today. I need to have a little bit of water. But, yeah. It's gonna be a, a great HHN. I'm excited to see what this haunt uh, uh, this haunt season has to you know offer. We've been talking a lot about Dark Harbor since we started Nights of Horror Radio. Uh, we're gonna be following that going into the summertime, going into haunt season, and whatnot. Um, I'm trying to figure out a way to do a live version of um, Nights of Horror Radio from Midsummer Scream. Uh, that could be a lot of fun. Maybe do like a show afterwards, kind of like a reaction of everything we just saw from day one and day two and day three. So that could be a lot of fun. Working on something on like like that right now so we can go live from the convention center, do Nights of Horror Radio there. It could be a lot of fun, me and Sammy. Um, and then stay tuned because uh, we're going to be announcing a new schedule really soon. I think next week, uh, next week's broadcast, we're going to be announcing a new schedule for uh, the summertime because I am going on the day shift during summertime, so we're going to be having a lot more uh, broadcast during the evening, which can probably get uh, some more people to tune in because it's at a reasonable time and not in the middle of the night. Um, but, yeah, we're going to have some fun doing that. We're going to be doing some evening shows over the summer, so that, uh, stay tuned for the summer lineup. That's going to be a lot of fun. We could probably get Sammy on the show every week almost, um, get more people on a show and, and have some guests on the show for the summer. So should be a lot of fun. Looking forward to that. Uh, and then we have a stream that's coming up this Thursday. This is a fresh announcement, uh, breaking news right here on Nights of Horror Radio. We're going to be streaming again this Thursday on uh, the Nights of Horror uh, Twitch page, and that is going to be the Killer Clowns from Outer Space video game, which we're going to talk a little bit about later in our news portion of the, of the show. But I am so excited. Killer Clowns from Outer Space, one of my favorite horror movies of all time, and to see it get a video game, to get a spiritual sequel, if you will, uh, and I will take it. So I've been seeing some gameplay. Some streamers play it as the the victims, the clowns. So I'm excited to get my hands on it. I'm going to download it uh, tomorrow. I'll play it a little bit tomorrow and then play it on stream on Thursday. So if any of the guys have it, maybe we'll hop on, play some killer clowns from outer space. It's going to be a fun time. Um, and we're going to have a lot of fun with it. We're going to play for a while. So uh, tune in. Uh, I believe that's going to be Thursday night at midnight. Going into Thursday, going into Friday. There you go. We're going to be doing our Killer Clowns from Outer Space uh, stream. So that's going to be a lot of fun. All right. Let's get into some Midsummer Scream news because there is a lot of Midsummer Scream news now. Um, I'm looking forward to this year's Midsummer Scream. Uh, let's do a recap of what we got so far. So we got a lot of great uh, panels coming, a lot of great guests coming. Uh, we got the cast of Megan coming, some of the cast of Black Phone coming. Uh, that's going to be a lot of fun. And then, of course, we have um, a lot of other celebrities coming through, doing signings, meetings. Queen Mary's Dark Harbor has a panel. Halloween Horror Nights has a panel. Um, you know, Satanic Hispanics Unveiled. 
by horror movies and beyond. That's going to be an awesome. Uh, Irish Tree Littles is amazing, so I can only imagine she's going to put on a great panel. A great panel, uh, not scary farm panel, of course. Uh, Rocking with Beetlejuice. It's going to be a uh, Universal Studios Beetlejuice Graveyard uh, reunion that they, you know, the old Beetlejuice show they used to do at at Universal Studios Halloween Horror Nights, and I think it was actually during the day too. Um, it was a day show that transitioned into Halloween Horror Nights, all that, but. They are going to be trying to do a reunion of that. Cassandra Peterson, a.k.a. Elvira, is going to be there. It's going to be great. Castle Dark has a presentation. And listen, this is just the, the weekend of just the the theme park attractions. You got Six Flags, Fright Fest, Castle Dark, and Queen Mary's Dark Harbor, Saturday, July 27th, Not Scary Farm, Winchester Mystery House, 13th Floor Entertainment Group, and Halloween Horror Nights, July 28th. I mean, it's going to be a stacked weekend. And that's, like I said, that is just theme park stuff. We are going to be running around the convention all weekend, getting all these panels for you guys. I'm trying to figure out a new system to have like a, what I would love to do in the future and, you know, feedback is, but I I would love to just kind of do a thing where like, I'm trying to get devices and stuff where we can actually link up cameras and actually just live stream the entire weekend. Um, I think it could be a lot of fun to do, uh, like to run around the convention, you know, tune into different panels and just overall have a, a fun time, you know, just, just to give the audience at home that couldn't attend the best viewing experience possible. Mooch, you've said it before, and, I, and I'll repeat it again. The gears are constantly ticking in the brain, man. I got so many great ideas that I want to bring to life, um, and we're going to get there. We're going to get there indeed. We might test run it this year, uh, depending if I pull the trigger on something or not, uh, to, to buy something that's kind of pricey. Um, but we'll see. Maybe not happen this year. Maybe it will happen next year. Maybe I need to go into more of a planning phase for it. But the gears are ticking, man. We're trying to give you guys the best live experiences of all time that we can right here on the Nights of Horror um, and the best overall haunt experiences that you guys can get if you guys can't attend any of these things. But yeah, it's going to be a stacked lineup for 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 Midsummer Scream uh, that weekend. And like I said, that is just for um, fucking theme parks, man. Uh, it's going to be insane. This is another one that caught my attention: Dark Matter, the music of our uh, uh, Alan Haworth live. He did all the fucking songs for a lot of John Carpenter films, like Halloween Two, Christine, They Live, Escape from New York, Halloween Three. He helped John Carpenter bring a lot of these to life. That's going to be an awesome panel. Looking forward to that. Ivory Tree Littles is doing another panel, How to Make a Horror Movie Producer Edition. Um, and look at her go, man. She's just fucking killing it. And I imagine that's going to be a great pilot. The, the Boulette brothers are going to be back. I know that was a famous uh, big attraction last year for them to come out and, and do a sign and meet and greet. So that was a lot of fun. Uh, recently Deceased. Party for the Recently Deceased July 27th, 8 p.m. Long Beach Convention Center. That is their after party. If you guys are uh, getting the gold bat or VIP tickets or anything above that, you guys are invited to the after party immediately that comes with your ticket. Highly suggest it. You're going to see Bob Gurr get on the dance floor and just tear it up. This is a newer one that was uh, added today, getting more scare and horror music. Um, so Alan's going to be doing some more, uh, looks like a little little workshop going on here so that's pretty cool to take a workshop from uh, an industry legend should be fun like i said guys stacked weekend at midsummer scream we are looking forward to it we cannot wait for it um i'm counting down the days for it uh and and everything and, and i cannot uh i cannot wait to see what this event's going to hold this year. I mean, every single year, no matter how busy we are, we have such a great time because we're busy doing the things we like to do. Um, you know, it's going to be a lot of fun. I, I'm looking forward to it, and I can't wait. should be a lot of fun. It's going to be a good time. Now I want to go to the independent scene, the home haunt scene, man. We love the home haunt scene. If it wasn't for the home haunt scene in 2020, man, there would have been no haunt season. So we are eternally grateful uh, for them. But Drag Society, our buddies over in Ontario, California, uh, if you guys remember last year, they did a Twilight Zone maze. 
And that Twilight Zone maze was amazing. They really went all out with the black and white. The sets looked great. And everything looked freaking phenomenal. Um, the theme for this year, Scooby-Doo and the Carnival of Chill. Now, this is nothing new. They announced this November 1st of 2023. What is new is they recently announced that, of course, the Scooby-Doo maze that they're going to do for their home haunt this year is going to be making an appearance over at Midsummer Scream in the Hall of Shadows this year. Looking forward to that to get a preview of um, that and, and everything. I am a huge Scooby-Doo fan. Drex Society does amazing work. I actually had the opportunity and, and privilege to scare in their haunt uh, the 2020 year, I believe. during I think it was the COVID year I actually got to scare at their haunt. Uh, and that was a lot of fun. I had a great time. We had a fun time doing that. And uh, they continue to keep inviting us back, welcoming us with open, open arms. And um, I, I am in, in just very happy that we're in a, a great relationship with these guys. And I wouldn't have it any other way. Sean and his team are a bunch of geniuses over there. They make what they have space-wise work, and I cannot wait to see what they do with Scooby-Doo, bringing some of the most iconic monsters and villains. Uh, I remember Sean was telling me, literally when they announced this to the team, that he told them any monster was open uh, to pick for the maze, so I can only imagine they're going to choose some of the wackiest, the goofiest, but the funnest monsters that you remember, know, and love on Scooby-Doo. So that's going to be a lot of fun. Can't wait to see what they bring to life. Like I said, that Twilight Zone maze was amazing. We have the full walkthrough on our channel, um, but to see it in person, man, it was just beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Uh, so yeah, Midsummer Scream, if you guys want to see what Drex Society is about, uh, I highly suggest to go check them out uh, at Midsummer Scream in the Hall of Shadows, and then I know you're gonna love what they what they bring to you. So go check them out in Ontario and tell them Knights of Horse sent you. Um, yeah, these guys are are incredible, and um, do they do amazing work? So I can't wait to see what they do with Scooby Doo. All right, ladies and gents. Uh, so a lot of news. Damn, a lot of news today, <laughs> and. Uh, I wouldn't have it any other way with another episode of Nights of Horror Radio, right? So we are uh, just getting started, guys, and it's going to be a great show with you. We're going to do a couple of uh, movie reviews when we get back with Imaginary Abigail, Ghostbusters, Frozen Empire, um, as well as we got some horror news to talk about, including um, Blumhouse rebooting an entire uh, Blumhouse rebooting a popular cult classic film a popular franchise gets announcements this thursday killer clowns from outer space the video game is out right now and a famous makeup artist making a amazing cameo in terrifier 3 all this and so much more of course right here on nights of horror radio
Man, the more I find these like underground up and coming artists, man, the more I I I hear heavy metal is still alive. Like these artists are still bringing back that original sound that we loved, knew and loved growing up with listening to heavy metal. You know, I'm only 25, but like listening to it from like uncles, cousins, older cousins and stuff that that you know influenced me to like this music and whatnot. It is great to hear that heavy metal is still alive. For anyone that's saying it's dying, you know, you're looking at the wrong places, man. That's why in Nights of Horror Radio we're trying to do original bands. That was uh, Timo with Mars Attacks. I I literally this is how I do it with Nights of Horror Radio. I make sure you know I just go before the show starts. I I browse around for some original artists. I look at some songs that sound awesome. I throw them on the Night's War radio playlist, which you can find right now on Spotify. If you guys know any original artists that you guys want featured on Night's of War radio, add them to the playlist. I would love to see and hear more original artists. And we do all forms of music here. A few weeks ago, we did some rap. We do play a lot of heavy metal music, speed metal and stuff. I'm a huge heavy metal, speed metal guy. Um, I, I just love fast music. Um, so that... Um, these bands are right up my alley. We got other bands coming up. We got Corrosive and we got Asylum. It's going to be a great show with some great music. I want to focus the attention now on, of course, uh, some film reviews that I was supposed to do last week. Uh, we changed uh, kind of topics. Or I think two weeks ago I was supposed to do it. We changed kind of hands on that. But that is uh, some long overdue ones I want to talk to you guys about. And that is Imaginary, number one. I thought the idea and con and concept of Imaginary worked really well. I thought it was a great and fun movie. Um, I understand some people had a little bit of issues with it. I think if the movie would have been rated R, it could have been a lot better. And that means more blood, more gore, and all that stuff. That could have been really cool. That being said, there are a lot of really cool and interesting scenes in this movie where I was just like holy shit and then the kind of plot twist at the very end was a huge kind of mind fuck and that's what I love with I'd put this in the in the category of like that psychological horror that's what I love with psychological horror films I love the idea that they pivot you one way the entire film and then at the very end they make you think about that shit after you leave that theater or after you turn off that that movie on your streaming service. Um, B-Movie Annabelle. Uh, actually, you know, it, it, it was its own thing, um, but I thought that it was a lot of fun. I would love to see more of that, that realm they go to in the movie um, towards the very end. That's kind of like the whole highlight of this film of them kind of getting to that realm. And when they go into it, I thought immediately this could work as a maze. Like, this is a movie that could work as a maze if they wanted to. Or throw it in, like, a section. Like, if they do, like, a Blumhouse kind of compilation, Terror Tram or Maze. They could put this, a section of this, in the maze. Specifically, that 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 realm they go to, I think, would really translate amazing in a maze. With the right lighting, right effects. I think it would be a lot of fun. I thought the movie, honestly, a solid, like... 7.5 out of 10. I really enjoyed it. There was a couple of cheesy parts, but for the most part, like every time you saw the, the Chauncey demon or like the bear or whatnot, you just knew something was going to happen. You knew something was going to go down. And I, and I really love to find out that kind of build up as to what went down as to what Chauncey's motive was with the little girl. And it was it was a fun movie. I, I I really enjoyed it for what it was. I'm not looking too much on it, and and that's really all I can say about it. Really, you know, I mean, it's that's basically it right there. Um, solid seven point five out of ten. Uh, I I would love to show it to other people if other people were interested. Um, so yeah, definitely suggest it. Check it out. Imaginary, highly suggest it. Number two, Abigail. Abigail was one that was on my list uh, for 2024. I thought this movie and this concept was brilliant. Um, these people were hired to kidnap a little girl and kind of babysit her for 24 hours overnight. Well, come to find out that this little girl, this ballerina, is actually a vampire. And she is more or less, uh, it's not the people are locked in with her, or it's not she's locked in with them, it's they're locked in with her. And basically, she turns this kidnapping into her own hunting ground. 
Um, a lot of twists and turns in this movie as well. A lot of like things that, you know, characters that you knew were going one route, some characters that you're like, kind of like, fuck, wow. A lot of pretty cool scenes and a lot of new uh, ways and explanations to the vampire genre as a whole and, and vampires as a whole of, of their of the uh, Radio Silence team take on vampires. I loved it. I thought this movie was fucking fun. It was great. It was gory. It was everything you wanted in a Radio Silence film. Radio Silence for me has not disappointed. They they came out big with Ready or Not. Then they did Scream 5 and 6. Um then they just released Abigail. I cannot wait to see what's next with Radio Silence. Give these guys a fucking show on a streaming service. I think they could be a match with the Duffer Brothers, with Mike Flanagan. Like Radio Silence is doing something. They're tapping into pop culture. They're tapping into a young audience. They're introducing them to these horror tropes. And I think it's awesome to kind of branch that pop culture that young audience and that horror genre all into one and bring a new audience in and experience what the world of horror has to offer. I think that also helps, especially when you're marketing something at Halloween Horror Nights. I'm not saying Abigail's going to be at Halloween Horror Nights. I'm just saying a lot of the times these big movies go to Halloween Horror Nights, especially if it's a universal movie, uh, and a famous IP in the horror world, and they kind of introduce that audience into the movie realm of horror of Abigail and then to take it a step further and introduce them to the haunt realm. It's like watch the movie, experience it in real life. I think that's a brilliant marketing point for most of the time when they do a collaboration like this. That being said, Abigail had a great twist and turn at the end where I thought it was, it was something that I was not expecting to see at the end of the movie. Um, but ultimately, um, a fun film. That one, a solid 9.5 out of 10. I, I really don't have any complaints too much about it. Um, it. It was a solid movie. And if they were to do a sequel or expand on this universe with Radio Silence involved, uh, I'm in. You know, tell me what you guys are going to do. Expand that, that franchise. Expand that story and give me more. Because uh, there, there is a, a plenty more to talk about with the cliffhanger ending that, that ended. There is a lot to talk about. You know, it's 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 a good it's it's a good thing. I want to talk about Ghost, Ghostbusters Frozen Empire. Um out of all the Ghostbusters movies that I've seen, it's not the worst, but it's not the best. I would put this honestly, it'd be Ghostbusters 1, Ghostbusters 2. Ghostbusters Afterlife, Ghostbusters Frozen Empire, Ghostbusters Female Reboot. Frozen Empire, I would say the best things about it were in the trailer. For me, you marketed so much of having the original Ghostbusters return that I felt like they were very... They weren't in the movie until that final climax scene of the big, fa the big battle. And yes, they sprinkled them here and there within um, the movie. But I just didn't fill it with this movie. This movie, in my opinion, took a Halloween end and an Exorcist Believer kind of turn. Where this franchise is based on one thing. And I understand what they're trying to establish with this new franchise. Much like how they try to do it with Star Wars. They're trying to introduce a brand new generation to the Ghostbusters world. And I understand what they have to do to do that. You have to introduce some new characters that are more or likely going to be liked by this newer generation, much like how we just talked about with Abigail. And of course, you got to make sure that it's people that are, are well known in pop culture, in film and TV right now. For example, the two big names in this film that a lot of people know... Finn Wolfhart and Paul Rudd. Huge names in the industry right now. Finn Wolfhart with his uh, role on Stranger Things, which is one of the biggest shows uh, on television right now with Netflix uh, gearing up to get its final season. Paul Rudd, who has made his mark in the comedy world and Ant-Man in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. So, I mean, you have two heavy hitters there. You got all the original Ghostbusters that are um, still alive there, you know, and it's just a, a stacked cast. 
what they failed to do for me is they focused a lot on the main little girl who is part of the Ghostbusters and her relationship with this ghost. The little girl is very lonely. She doesn't know much. Or, you know, she just feels like kind of out of place at the moment and she just feels like separated from the team. This ghost comes along and befriends her and they kind of go back and forth. The ghost is actually played by the girl who played the psycho killer slash love interest in the babysitters one and two for the, our main kid uh, in that film. And she is just kind of trying to be her friend and everything. Turns out she had an alternative motive that kind of started the whole frozen empire thing. I just wasn't feeling the story. I, I honestly, I went in with high hopes cause I really did like afterlife. Just didn't feel the story for this one. If I had to give this one a review, I honestly a solid five out of 10. And it's only getting a five because I thought the special effects were cool and I thought the ghosts looked cool and it was cool to see a lot of old school ghosts make returns, some like cameos and whatnot. That was a lot of fun to do that, especially coming back to New York after all these years. That was really cool. Just didn't like the story. And it seems like a lot of horror movie sequels, reboots, continuations, whatever you want to call it, reimaginings, anniversaries, whatever you want to call it, Seems like they're doing this thing where they're trying to tap into more emotion with today's society. And that's fine and all. You can make an original horror movie that does that. But when you have these establishing franchises that already established what they were, what they are, and then you kind of change that formula and kind of throw not only the original fans kind of out the door, but grasped on a few new fans that really don't even know the franchise i mean i don't know is this the right move to go who knows i don't know we'll see where hollywood goes from there there is a lot to see with ghostbusters they have big plans for ghostbusters as well i'm excited to see where they go with ghostbusters um after this hopefully they can recover if they do uh, do do a third movie I know they're talking about doing an animated series. I know they're talking about doing a video game. Who knows what's going to happen? Uh, Ghostbusters needs to do a pivot quick, though, because this franchise is beloved by many. And, uh, yeah, I'd hate to see it tank, but who knows? Uh, we're going to take a quick music break, and after that, we are going to be uh, diving into some horror news. So stay tuned. We got Corrosive next with Fatal Strike, and, uh, yeah, so yeah, when we come back, horror news and uh, whatnot, and then we'll see what happens next. You're listening to Nights of Horror Radio. I'm your host, Anthony. Enjoy some corrosive.
<laughs> back here on Knights of War Radio, man. Fatal Strike Corrosive. That shit went hard, man. Um, good song right there. Good, good song. All right. You ready to get in the whore news? A lot of good stuff coming out with Bloody Disgusting. I follow Bloody Disgusting on Instagram, Twitter, all that fun stuff. Get my news from them. All the horror news you're going to ever need. Bloody Disgusting. Follow them. Preferably on X, actually, I would say. Follow them. Uh, let's talk about Blumhouse first. Now, Blumhouse, obviously, the kings of horror. The guys are rebooting everything, reviving everything, making all their original stuff. They are ruling the horror realm right now, and there's no denying that. Uh, whether they're good movies, whether they're bad movies, doesn't matter. The box office numbers are showing. They are making a lot of money, and they are profiting a lot from these horror movies. That being said, Blumhouse now has the rights. They are going to be eyeing to reboot My Bloody Valentine. Uh, the last time we seen a My Bloody Valentine reboot was in 2009 with Jensen Ackles. A lot of people didn't like it. I was a fan of it because I'm a fan of Jensen Ackles and Supernatural. So I'm excited to see and curious to see what they are going to do with this reboot. Who are they going to cast to play the killer? Um... You know, who they're going to cast as the the love interest, all that fun stuff. It's going to be interesting to see uh, how big of a production they go with this. Now, this is a uh, movie that will be rebooted for the third time now. The original coming out, I believe, in the 1980s or 70s. Um, but pretty old property, pretty old franchise. The original is where it's at, in my opinion. Um, the original is a lot of fun. Cheesy, but it's good. Um I'm excited to see what Blumhouse is going to do with this one. This is either going to be really good or it's going to be really bad. That's how Blumhouse works. Sad to say it, but it's truth. Let's talk about another famous horror franchise that I myself am a huge fan of. Been waiting for news for months now. We finally are going to be getting a lot of news. This Thursday, May 30th, Silent Hill is going to be doing a ton of announcements with video games, movies, a lot of stuff to celebrate the 25th anniversary. I love Silent Hill. Those games were great. The PT uh, teaser was iconic, playable trailer, uh, and that was supposed to be a Silent Hill game with uh, Norman Reedus. I'm excited. They're supposed to be rebooting Silent Hill 2 to a more uh, you know, upgraded graphics and whatnot. They're going to be making a brand new Silent Hill game. They're making a brand new Silent Hill movie. Uh, I think they're doing a, a show for Netflix or something like that. They're doing a lot of things with Silent Hill. I'm excited to see what they're going to announce this Thursday, so keep an eye out. You might get some trailers, brand new game walkthroughs, game trailers, brand new game, movie teasers. Who knows what we're going to get? Uh, I remember they did the same thing with Resident Evil. That was a huge year, and that was a lot of fun. Now it's Silent Hill's time. I'm excited to see what Silent Hill has to announce this Thursday, so stay tuned. Might be covering that next week on uh, Nights of Horror Radio as well. Now, I'm a massive fan of Killer Clowns from Outer Space, one of my favorite movies of all time. Gotten to meet practically most of the cast, the Kyoto Brothers, John Masari, good friend of the channel. Um, I love Killer Clowns from Outer Space, man. One of my favorite movies. It was goofy. It's fun. Gory. Uh, creepy when you think about it. Uh, great title track to it by the Dickies. Great score by John Masari. I mean, the list goes on. There's so much about this movie that is just so fun, so great. The clowns look awesome for the 80s. They looked fucking terrifying. They still look terrifying to this day every time I watch it. And, you know, just, just overall, this movie, I think, now more than ever is just huge. It's popular. The fans have been demanding a sequel for years. The rights were under uh, MGM, which is now owned by Amazon. So we were waiting to see if Amazon would greenlight a sequel or a show or something. Since the MGM deal with Amazon went through, we haven't heard nothing. Up until about a year or two ago, we got word that they were making a Killer Clowns from Outer Space video game. Now, as a fan of the franchise, this was something where I was just like, okay, this is something that I can get on board with because this is my sequel. I've been waiting for my sequel all these years. I had so many ideas. I've talked to the cast members about that, of what they would do for a sequel, of their ideas for a sequel, of like just kind of something brief. But I threw some ideas out there. I mean, it, it was a lot of fun uh, the COVID year, but I, I was super excited to find out that they were making this game 
Killer Clowns from Outer Space, the game, out right now. Purchase it now. With that being said, we we mentioned earlier in the stream we are going to be doing another live stream this Thursday with Killer Clowns from Outer Space uh, right here on our Twitch page, so stay tuned for that. Very excited to be playing Killer Clowns from Outer Space, whether I got to do it solo, whether I do it with the boys. Uh, whoever is going to, whoever has it, whoever wants to play it, uh, we're going to be playing Thursday at midnight. Super excited for that. Looking forward to that. Um, and we're going to be playing as survivors, as the clowns, see what everything does, what everyone, uh, who everyone does, everything, all that stuff. So we're going to try to be figuring out the game as much as possible. We're going to be trying to master that game. We might be live streaming that game a lot lately because uh, God knows how much I love Killer Clowns in Outer Space. And I want to try to get everything leveled up as much as I possibly can. Been seeing streams on TikTok, on Twitch all day of it, YouTube. Looks like a lot of fun. Can't wait to get my hands on it. Uh, tomorrow I'm going to be buying it, downloading it, playing my first uh, playthrough of it. And then, of course, um, we're going to be streaming it on Thursday. So it's going to be a lot of fun. Now going back to the movie world, of course, uh, Terrifier 3 is the long, not long actually, It's it's been about a year. They've been doing pretty good with these Terrifier movies, but the next uh, installment of the franchise and the final installment of the franchise, the trilogy that is of uh, Terrifier uh, is coming out later this year. I think in October, it's supposed to be a Christmas movie. And we just got word, Sex Machine himself, Tom Savini will be making a cameo in Terrifier 3. Looking forward to seeing what they're going to do with him, if he's going to get killed by Art the Clown himself. There are so many ideas that could be potentially happening with uh, with with Sex Machine. Tom Savini seems like a good, a cool guy. I, I, I get intimidated every time I see him at a convention, but I think one of these days I'm just going to shoot my shot, meet the man himself. He is iconic. He's done a lot of iconic work, and uh, I, I need to meet him. I, I think it's time. Uh, and I think we need to add him to the wall of fame over there with all my other autographs. So yeah, Tom Savini, Terrifier 3, makes me kind of want to see it even more now. Wasn't too big of a fan of Terrifier 2, loved the first Terrifier. Um, I'm excited to see what they do with Terrifier 3. We'll see what happens. And last but not least, I don't know if this is going to be a horror movie or not, but... It kind of is coming off the vibes of that, especially with the font that they chose to promote it. And that is, of course, uh, Rain Johnson is coming back to do another Knives Out film entitled Wake Up, Dead Man, A Knives Out Mystery. That is coming to Netflix in 2025. I am super excited. Daniel Craig, for one, is an amazing actor. Does amazing in these movies, and I cannot wait to see what they're going to do with this third movie, who they're going to cast in this third movie. If you guys know anything about these Knives Out movies, they get an, a star-studded cast. I thought both Knives Out movies thus far have been amazing. A nice whodunit, a nice little um, murder mystery. I love murder mystery movies, and this just hit the nail on the coffin when it when it marks all those, um, those check marks. So definitely looking forward to Wake Up. Uh, Wake Up Dead Man, A Knives Out Mystery uh, in 2025 on Netflix. Netflix has it stacked for 2025. WWE is also taking Monday Night Raw weekly to Monday uh, Monday nights on Netflix. That's going to be interesting transition as well. Um, and WWE and, and wrestling, the world of pro wrestling itself has just been killer. Uh, you know, WWE just got off King and Queen of the Ring, had a great weekend in Saudi Arabia, and I think it was a great PLE. Um and, you know, AEW just got me reinvested on Sunday with the return of MJF. I'm a huge MD MJF fan. I love the character that he he brings out, the kayfabe that he brings out in the character, and, and just someone who can back that character uh, in the ring. He is uh, an amazing talent, and I can't wait to see what he does in this next run of AEW. I know he's got some unfinished business with Adam Cole, baby. Uh, he kind of took care of it a little bit in the ring on Sunday, but we'll see what happens going forward. I can't wait to watch Dynamite tomorrow. It's going to be really cool. All right, we're going to take one last song break, and after we come back, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna end the show uh, with our nice outros. Uh, talk about stuff for next week. MJF WWE. I wish. Um, I don't think that's going to happen though. Any at least anytime soon, um, especially after the tattoo he showed off on Sunday of him basically saying all in. AEW on his ankle so don't know if that's going to happen anytime soon I wish I mean I don't know though MJF is such an if you censor him I feel like he could still make it work but I don't know it's just for me I don't think that you can't censor MJF man that's that's what made the character 
All right, we're going to take a quick break with our last band, Asylum. This is Eternal Violence by Asylum. Asylum. Asylum slapped. Asylum slapped today. Hey, listen, ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank each and every one of you for uh, spending your Wednesday morning slash Tuesday night with me here on twitch.tv slash Nights of Horror. Um, I really appreciate each and every one of you tuning in to Nights of Horror Radio. Another great episode. Hey, next week, build your own HHN map to get us prepared for HHN where you're going to... Uh, Bring some of the boys in. We're going to build our own maps and build our own IPs, kind of give us um, some explanation as to what we could, you know, potentially see or, you know, why we would want it there. 
uh, and just kind of go over that. It should be a lot of fun. So stay tuned for that. Uh, that's going to be a lot of fun. Build your own HHN map next week. And if there's an announcement between now and next week, then you can expect to uh, see it covered on the Knights of Horror on a solo video. So check out the Knights of Horror YouTube channel, uh, youtube.com slash Knights of Horror. And as well as follow us on all of our social medias that are linked down right below me. Uh, we got X. We got Instagram, TikTok, threads, at Knights of Horror on X and at the Knights of Horror on the rest. Um so yeah, stay up to date with what we're doing on socials to to get a better idea of of what's going on with the channel and everything. Uh, also, Killer Clowns from Outer Space stream this Thursday at midnight. I'm looking forward to getting into the game, uh, seeing what it's about, uh, first looks and everything, and then we're gonna review it next Tuesday on Nights of Horror Radio in the beginning of the show. So stay tuned for that. Other than that, I hope you guys had a wonderful night. I had another great night of Nights of Horror Radio. I will see you guys next Tuesday, same time. Uh, we're, we're, we're looking either Tuesday or Monday, so, so bear with me. You'll find out on social media, so follow us on our socials to find out what we're doing either Monday or Tuesday. I will let you guys know. With all that being said, I hope you guys had a great night, are having a great night, and have a great day today. Love each and every one of you, and stay spooky. <laughs>